Listen, today I'm going to teach a message, and I titled it to be refreshed. And so I want to talk about something that I personally have never heard anyone talk about. They probably have. After I finished this message, before I went and preached it last night, I actually went on Google and tried to find a sermon that was any, anywhere similar to this, and I, I couldn't find one. I'm sure they preached on it, but I've never heard it, and I believe the Lord was dealing with me about this, and I, and I think it's important, so the title is To Be Refreshed. And so, so um, and, and as I've been thinking about this, I'm gonna talk to you about God's refreshing us and then his refreshment, and how does that work? What does that look like? In um, Psalms 23, verses one through three from the Amplified Version, the Bible reads, the Lord is my shepherd. To feed, to guide, and to shield me, I shall not want. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes and restores my soul or my life. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And most of the time, we would look at that refresh and restore, and we would think all the natural things that happen. But folks, there's a difference between resting your body and refreshing your soul. Acts 3, 19 and 20. Now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Then times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord, and he will again send you Jesus your appointed Messiah. Peter is not just talking about taking a break. He's talking about a deep soul level rejuvenation that comes from turning to God. It's about aligning ourselves with his will. And in that alignment, finding true rest and finding true peace. See, worldly refreshment is temporary. It's like a Band-Aid on a deeper need. We might feel good for a moment, but it doesn't heal us. It doesn't last. Where we truly ache in our spirit, our emotions. And I believe God wants us to be whole and healthy spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally. But a lot of people in our world, even as as believers, they're not. Because I don't think we've understood what it means to refresh my soul. And how that works. Jesus is calling. I can hear him. Just let us know what he says. (laughs) Someone better answer the Lord right now, man. You better get going. I'm just, (laughs) it's Wednesday. I'm just having fun. See, worldly ideas of vacations and relaxing is self-focused. And focusing on self creates depression and anxieties. That is what is wrong in our world today. That's why depression is at, and I wrote an epidemic, but really it's at a pandemic level. We've all heard those terms. See, USA Facts in 2021 found that 8.3% of Americans experienced a major depressive episode with a higher prevalence among women, 10% compared to men, 6%. We are talking about more than 21 million people. Over 40 million adults suffer from anxiety in the U.S. 31.1% of U.S. adults experience anxiety sometime in their lives. And so when we're talking these numbers, we're talking about over 100 million people. That's a third of our nation suffers from this. And it's not just the world, it's the church too. Depression has been, uh, you know, it's a, it's a catch word. It's a, something we like to say, I'm so depressed, I'm so depressed, I'm so depressed. When I was younger, I never heard anybody say that. I never heard anybody talk about anxiety attacks. I, I didn't even know what those were until about 10 years ago, or maybe 15, when someone said, I'm having an anxiety attack or a panic attack. I said, so what is that? See, a lot of these things are, are in our country today because our country and people have moved completely away from God, and so if you're not with God, how do your soul get refreshed? And if you are a believer, and you say I'm a believer, why why aren't our souls being refreshed? By the end of this message, I will give you some thoughts on how to refresh your soul. Some of you may not like it, and some of you will embrace it, 
and finally do what God wants us to do. So you can see it is really a pandemic of issues. How many people know people that are always depressed or have anxiety or anxiety attacks? Now, I wanna say this. When I talk about these worldly vacations, there's nothing wrong with taking a vacation. It does restore your body. It can restore your mind a little bit, let it rest. But how many of you go on vacation and you're more tired when you come home than when you left? Because you fill your vacation with all these appointments and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go to Disney World and how, who gets rest there? And then a lot of us, when we go on vacation, we come back and then we go back to work and we're like, now I gotta play catch up. So we end up, you know, like, I gotta do this and we woke up long hours and so, and, and so how does that work when God says to people, we need to work from sun up to sundown. And in our country today, here's what's, here's what's crazy. We have a pandemic of depression and anxiety, but here's what's crazy. We work less than ever. Some people think if they work 30 hours a week, they're overworked. What a waste in our country. Look how far we've moved away from God, that people don't even have a good work ethic. And if you go to work, you should have a good work ethic as a believer, if you do it as under the Lord. Well, I, I, you know, I work 40 hours a week, but I need more money. Get a second job. It's like, I don't, I, get, I don't get to spend quality time with my family. Can I tell you something? Everybody who's told me that lies. And you say, what do you mean they lie? They, they don't care about that, because when they do get time, they're on video games. They're doing their hobbies. Where are your kids? Where are your wife? Where's your, where's your husband? Someone said, someone say, oh man, amen or oh me. <laughs> and it's so amazing. You know, I get guys that, well, I work six days a week. I'm not going to church on Sunday. That's why their souls never get refreshed. <clears throat> it's amazing how we think about God and the kingdom. It's amazing how we think we can separate ourselves from God's church and him. Well, that got quiet. <laughs> I wonder if it's as quiet in Clovis and Portales and the other campuses. I wonder if they just went, ooh. Uh. <laughs> but there's a way where God can refresh the soul, your mind, will, and emotions every day. People work less than in years past, yet our society's still so sick. Worldly ideas of vacations again and relaxing, again is self-focused. Focusing on self creates depression and anxiety. When are we gonna learn that? I know people in here, we, they feel like we're the dentist pulling your teeth all out. Because we say give and you need to serve. And it's amazing how many Christians get so offended I don't even know if they're Christians, they call themselves that. Get so offended, yet the Bible talks a lot about that. Isn't it funny? The thing that, one of the things that God says do the most, most believers do the least, but yet we all expect God to help us. Now he's always there because he's full of grace and mercy. But you need to do something, acting on his word, his promises, so you can receive them. So biblical, God refreshing focuses on God, which leads to actual relaxing, decreasing stress. It lowers anxiety. It gives you new strength. That's what it means out of the Greek. It means to restore the strength of the soul, to actually revive the divine viewpoint of life to an individual. When, you, when God refreshes your soul, it actually just helps you revive the divine viewpoint of life that God wants us to have. It's, it gives us new strength. It causes us to relax in a way that is not based on, you know, going to sleep. And we all need to sleep. But it's, it's, it's something that's much greater than that. It may refresh our minds, our bodies, when you take vacations or you go and, you know, you take a day off. It may refresh our minds and bodies, but what about the soul? Your mind, will, and emotions. That part that gets broken sometimes. 
That part that believes because it's a world, it's kind of a catchy term. You know, I'm depressed, I'm depressed, I'm depressed. I have anxiety. And now, I'm going to say this. I do get anxious sometimes, especially when I go to the airport. I don't know what it is about going to the airport. Until I'm sitting at the gate, watching the screen on time, on time, on time, on time. I, you know, and then when the crowd comes, I'll go, I'll get up, I'll get anxious, I'll be, hey, are they loading? They said, no, we're just standing here. I'm like, oh man, false alarm. <laughs> and I don't totally relax until I'm on the plane and it's in the air. Now I'll get anxious, but I don't, I don't struggle with anxiety or depression. I don't, I don't struggle that on a daily basis. It's just, it's just the fact that I don't want to miss my flight. Come on, anybody know what I'm talking about? I don't know if there's going to be long lines. I just, you know, and then you've got to get through the, you know, the TSA checkpoint, which I think is ridiculous. You say, why? Because this is America. And we overreact to everything. We just overreact. And that's how America is. And then we all buy into it like it, it, it's safer. And it may be a little bit. I don't know. But I know it's inconvenient. I can remember going to airports where I could walk my wife all the way to the gate, sit with her until she got on the plane. Now somehow I'm evil. I don't have a ticket, I'm evil. And can I tell you what I hate about uh, some, some things at the airport that I, I think is un-American? If you see something suspicious, tell somebody. I'm like, this is not Russia. I'm not telling you nothing. <laughs> you say, why? Because, folks, it, it, it's, it's, it, becomes, it becomes paranoia. And then we wonder why we're depressed all the time and afraid. Amen. And some of you may totally disagree, and that's okay. You can totally disagree. But what I'm saying to you is these are the things that cause depression and anxiety. And we get more of the world than we do of God. The average Christian, if it's true, what the Southern Baptist Convention came out with, the average Christian comes once every four, five, six weeks. The average, that's the average. Then there's some that are here all the time. They're the ones that are the most refreshed. And, and, and we need to understand what God is saying here. We need to understand what Peter is saying. So refreshment it means to cool again or refresh. I'm giving you all these definitions. It denotes the idea of recovery, revival, or refreshing of one's spirit or soul. This goes beyond just physical rest or relaxation. It implies a renewal or restoration of inner strength and spiritual vigor. In the New Testament, it is often associated with the idea of being refreshed in the presence of God through fellowship with other believers. That's why Hebrews 10.25 said, and let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. How do we encourage one another if we're not with one another? And what does God mean when he's talking about we encourage one another? We refresh others. And when you serve other people, you're being refreshed. When you refresh someone else, God refreshes you. That's why we live in a selfish, selfish society. It's really sick. People ignore God and reject God for, for everything else. It's amazing to me how we reject God. And we just, we just think, well, this is what God wants me to do, but we don't know. People put family before God because isn't that the right thing to do? Not necessarily. See, we don't even like hearing this stuff. We're so naturally minded that that's why, as a whole, society is not healthy. But what if I was to tell you, you don't have to live depressed? You don't have to live with anxiety because anxiety is fear. So what do I need to do? I'll let you know in a moment. You can't leave. <laughs> I'm not talking about just taking a nap. I'm talking about something that sustains us and gives us a viewpoint, a vantage point of what life is really about. So how do we truly get refreshed by God? How does God refresh our souls? Are you ready? Number one, you got to go to church. You got to be in the prayer. You know what? We just spent 15 minutes or 16 minutes worshiping God. That refreshes your soul. I have a lot of pastor friends, and I'll go preach for them, whatever. 
And, and I get antsy, like when worship starts, I'm like, hey, are we going out? Are we going out? And they're like, do you want to go out? And I'm like, yes. I like worshiping God. You see me? I come out here all the time and worship God. Why? Because it refreshes my soul. And it refreshes your soul. Isn't it crazy? That's why people stand there like this. You're not being refreshed. I mean, thank God that you'll get something. And then when you're in church and hearing the word like this, it refreshes you. It's like water that's cleansing and helping. You get washed by the water of the word. I mean, by the power of the word. You, we, we, God has a way of doing that, but we got to spend time in his presence. You know, I've invited so many people to church over the years, and, and some men and women just, just, you know, my wife and I. We, so it's, it's, it's ironic to me. Over years and years have gone, you know, we've been doing this. Someone will come to the church maybe for the first time in a long time. And then they'll stand there and, and we'll look at them and they'll be weeping like crying. Men and women, just crying. I had one guy tell me not too long ago, and said, well, it's probably four, five, six years ago now. He goes, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm crying. He said, he was freaking him out. He's like, I, I, I don't know why I'm crying. I said, I know why. And he goes, why? And I said, because you're not used to the presence of God. See, some of us get used to it, which is okay. We just get familiar. We can't get familiar where we sin, but we get, we get used to the presence of God. So we, we walk in, and then sometimes you get so familiar, which can be sin if you get that familiar, where you're like, I don't feel God anymore. That's because you're walking in his presence. But people who don't know, how many brought people to church you've seen the same thing? Like, man, they cry. That's why they're weeping. They're getting in the presence of the Lord maybe for the first time in their life, and their natural being is, is just is just reacting to it. You gotta go to church. It's not an option if you want your soul refreshed. You gotta get involved. Why do you get involved? Because when you're involved, you're refreshing others, and guess what you do? When you refresh others, what did Peter say? Then you'll be refreshed. Ha. Huh. You gotta spend time in prayer. Not just asking God for things, but spend time in prayer, crying out to him. Tell him how great he is. You know, it's, it's amazing to me. That's the hardest thing to get Christians to do is pray. When we put it online for the 21 days of prayer, we did have more people praying than ever. When we came that Saturday, it was just, it was little or none. I mean, there was some, but, you know, a couple hundred people here. This thing seats over 2,500 seats. And we can put almost 3,000 seats in here if we want. 200 people. The theater where my wife and I went, I think there was 80 or 90. I think at the East Campus, there was 80 or 90. At East Mountain, there was 15. And, and you know what? Because people couldn't take one hour of their day, probably because of ball games and all the other stuff that's more important that doesn't refresh anything. And yet we all want God's blessing. God, I don't know why I've been praying. Well, are you getting in his presence to allow him to refresh you and heal you? Isn't it amazing? God said, Jesus said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. But when it comes to actual praying, it's like, oh, no, no moss. Mm -mm, nope. Or I'm too busy. I got things to do. Well, then stay the way you are. But don't blame God. Please don't blame God because of your inaction or my inaction, whatever it is. If we want to get real, let's get real. You got to pray. And, and praying is not just talking. Praying is learning to listen. I pray for a while and then quiet. And people say, but pastor, I don't know how to pray. That's why you got to get filled with the Holy Ghost. You gotta be baptized with the Holy Ghost. You, you, why? Because he, he'll, he'll help you pray. Most of my prayer time is in other tongues. People say, I don't believe in that. Isn't it so funny that the thing we need the most, people fight against? I, I, here's what I don't understand. Why do we fight against something that's so clear throughout the scriptures? Now there's some things that are controversial, some things that aren't real clear, and we can debate over those, but man, In the Bible, there was three commissions. I've said this before. The first one was get people saved in Mark. The second was Matthew a couple weeks later, make disciples. And the third one was on the day of Pentecost. Don't move until you get filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't you go anywhere. People say, well, that's weird. Is it? 
He's praying in other languages. I mean, I don't know why that's weird. I've heard a lot of people speak in airports and when we've gone in other countries and they, they, they talk in other languages, it doesn't go, oh, that's so weird. <laughs> it just blows me away, like, what? And like, I don't look at them like, I don't know what language they're talking, but okay. It's not weird, it's just a language. But see, we want all that God has, but we're, we, 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 fight, we just buck the things that God wants us to do the most. So you gotta pray. You gotta read and meditate on the word. Not just a quick read, but reading it to understand it. You gotta think about it, meditate on it. Read it. It'll wash you, it'll cleanse you, it'll refresh your soul. Well, I don't understand it all, neither do I. And you know what? I could probably preach this message five years from now and have a lot more information. Why? Because we're all a work in progress. You'll never know it all. You'll never know. You'll just, we learn as we go. It's just like when I do a, 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 the ministry at the end for people to get born again, for them to get saved. I've changed the way I do because I'm growing, I'm learning. Because in America, we just said, and you've said, people have said, I'm saved, I prayed that prayer, I'm saved. And you act like the devil, you live like the devil, but I'm saved. Don't tell me I'm not saved. Well, someone needs to tell you if you're saved or not because you don't want to find out when you die. Because there ain't no turning back then. It's like, oops, I, I, but God, I said a prayer. And he's like, I have no clue who you are. See, and here's the difference now, and this is the way I teach it, this is the way I do it. If you're ready to make Jesus Lord of your life, are you willing to let him lead? Are you willing to learn his word so you can follow him his way, not your way, his way? And a lot of people say, well, I'm saved, don't tell me I'm not saved. They're unwilling to do that. And my Bible teaches me, I don't know why I didn't see this a long time ago. And you know what? I've never heard anybody talk about this either. You watch any Christian television, and I'm, I'm confessing right now, I don't anymore. And if they do an altar call, if they do an altar call, if they give you an opportunity to receive Jesus, they'll all say the same thing. Just pray this prayer and you're okay. I don't believe it. It's just words. It's lip service if you're not willing to change. And what does God say? They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. So you have to believe in your heart, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and then you'll be saved. We have to learn the word. And hopefully as you learn it, you'll be like, man, I, I, I learned some things and it's not what I thought. And, 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 and that's okay because we're all a work in progress, but you gotta read it. Then once you read it, you gotta act on it. You gotta be a doer of the word. All these things refresh our souls so we don't have to be depressed. We don't have to be full of fear. As we spend time in the presence of God doing the things he says, he just refreshes our soul, our mind, will, and emotions. It's like, it's like God, it's like that peace that passes or surpasses all your understanding. I think we need this desperately. And then number six, you gotta serve others. There's a special kind of joy and refreshment that comes from serving others. And I, you know, I'm a, I'm a pastor. I purpose to serve people. But this is what God's called me to do. And the only thing I can relate it back to in my life and that's been a while is when a couple years ago we, we, we went to help and my grandkids went with me and we went and helped pass out coats. Remember, Cynthia, we, we, we went and passed out coats and these folks were homeless. They, they didn't know me from anybody. I, I didn't have to be past Steve, and I was glad about that. I could just be Steve, helping these mothers and these kids, and it was so fun. We'd put a coat on a little kid, and he'd say, yeah, it's too big, and oh, I don't like it. I said, which one do you like? Let's try it. I didn't care what they picked. It was just, it just, and I remember telling people when I walked away, I, it was so good. It just, I felt such great joy. You know what God was saying? Steve, because you refresh someone else, I'm going to refresh you. That's why you serve. 
That's why you do what the Bible actually says to do. You refresh others. When you're door greeting, you're refreshing others. All these folks in our nurseries and our children's church, they're refreshing these kids. And God said, you refresh mine, I'll refresh you. And what does he refresh us from? So we don't have to have all these issues that the world has. The world is selfish. We should be unselfish. But we take our selfishness in here and we remain selfish. But yet we're all going to heaven. God understands. No, he doesn't. If you want your soul refreshed, you want him to lead you by beside those still waters. I don't know about you. I'd rather be by with still waters than rushing water. I'd rather be able to wade in there than to be swept away. So you got to serve others. There's just a special kind of joy that comes from serving others and giving, refreshing others that way, honors God. When you give, you honor God, you refresh others, and as you do this, God refreshes you. So you, you can't pick and choose like, well, I'll do this one, this one, this one. No, these are, I believe this is the antidote, if you would, the remedy, the medicine to help us restore our souls, to refresh our souls so we... We don't have to be so sad and discouraged and, and depressed. I believe God can heal anybody. But I believe he gives us his word so when we act on it, he refreshes us. And I'm not talking about just, like I said, taking a nap or taking a vacation. And when I take a real vacation with my wife, I just want to go lay on a beach. I take a book. I come back a little refreshed because we don't have a lot of appointments. I said, Cynthia, you can go do anything you want. I'm just going to lay here. And so my wife, we lay on the beach. We go out there early in the morning. I may go do a workout. We may play beach volleyball with some folks if they get a game. When we play games, we play backgammon against each other. And most of the time, I'm El Campeon. <laughs> Last time she was, though. Last time she beat me. I was, like, shocked. Like, what happened? Like, I'm... I was shocked. Like, Wow. And she was loving it. What'd you say? <laughs> you know, she just called me. But I forgive you for doing that. She just called me, you're so stupid. <laughs> we hang out there till about the evening because you don't want to go in the water when it gets evening because that's when the sharks start feeding. You have to watch Shark Week to know all this stuff. And we get cleaned up. If we're with friends or people, we, then we go out and eat a nice dinner, and then we stay up till 3 or 4 in the morning playing games, all kinds of games. And, 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 and we relax. But I always take a book with me. I'm always listening to the Word because that's what refreshes your soul. The, the vacation can relax your body maybe. But what relaxes this? What slows this down? It's like we sang... One of the songs that God hears you, you know, he heard my prayer. And sometimes, I don't know about you, but I'll wake up in the middle of the night and that, and that whatever song, it gets stuck in my brain. Anybody ever done that? And it's like, Lord, I just want to sleep. Maybe I should say, here I am, Lord. You know, because the song is, I'm waking up and it's running through my brain. I'm like, I just want to rest. <laughs> but maybe God's trying to tell me, I want you to worship me so I can refresh your soul. There's nothing wrong with that. Some of you men are like, I'm a man. David was the baddest man. King David was a bad, bad dude. He said he had his mighty men of valor. The reason he had those, because he was one. He was a tough, tough hombre. He'd fight you in a second, probably kill you. I mean, he was just a tough dude, and yet he worshiped God so much that his, all of his clothes came off. And the wife that... You know, the, the wife, Saul's daughter that Saul gave him, she, she couldn't handle it. Like, what are you doing? You're making a fool of yourself. He said, I don't care. I'm worshiping God. And, and that's the way we got to be. We got we to gotta, so do all these things. And see, Philemon 1 7 says, Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brothers, have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. This highlights how fellowship. And acts of service among believers can bring refreshment to our soul. Augustine of Hippo said, Hippo said, Thou hast made us for thyself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it finds its rest in thee. 
True refreshment comes from God. So for us to become whole and healthy, spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally, we must do it God's way. Most people want God's help without doing anything. I don't know why God doesn't help me, because you're not acting on his word. You're not, you're not acting on his promises so he can fulfill them. Even the Sabbath, as some people talk about, you, you gotta go to church on Saturday, which is, it's just, it's just. <sighs> you know, when I was in Israel, I, I walked up to an elevator. My wife and the people we were with said, don't go on that elevator, and I'm like, why? What's wrong with it? It's the Sabbath elevator, and I'm like, what's a Sabbath elevator? And they said, it's the one that, that stops on every floor. I'm like, what? They said, yeah, they're not allowed to push the buttons because it represents fire doing something. And I'm like, okay, let me get this straight. And I'm standing in a bunch, you know, Jewish folk, and, and I'm talking to our friends. I'm like, okay, let me get this straight. They can ride in the elevator. They just can't push a button. I'm like, how does that make any sense? Why don't they use the stairs? At least they're not doing anything with electricity. Then I said, okay, if they're not allowed to turn on lights or push buttons, how do they turn on their lights when they go home? <laughs> I'm, I'm, my jaw's dropping like, does this make sense? So you can't turn the light switch on, but you can put the clapper on and <laughs> poof. And here's what's crazy about people who believe we got to go to church on set. They make a big deal out of it. But yet they drive their cars to the church. That's fire, folks. That's like, I mean, I'm like, what? Then they use their microwave. Then they go out to dinner afterwards, and people are working, waiting on them. I'm like, wouldn't you think? No, I'm not, I'm not going to keep. You know, <laughs> here's one. I don't care if they're sinning as long as I'm not sinning. Ha! That's a real Christian attitude. I think that, in the, and we think the Sabbath is doing nothing. The Sabbath is waiting on the Lord. It's worshiping him and honoring him. He just didn't want you to do your normal work. And then he said this. He said, you can't do it. That's why Jesus came, because they couldn't do it. Even Jesus with the Pharisees said, are you kidding Look at your disciples. And then he said, you healed on the Sabbath? He goes, are you guys crazy, you hypocrites? Which one of you wouldn't go loose his donkey if he was stuck in a hole? They would all go do it. That's against the Sabbath. And so Jesus said, you can't keep it, but we can, we can have a day where it's, we honor the Lord. That's why you come to church. That's why you serve others. It's not a violation of the Sabbath. It's honoring the Sabbath. We just got to, we got to, we got to take a day where we don't work or something. But when we don't work, we don't lay around and do nothing. We worship God. See, all this stuff to me, and I don't usually get into it because it doesn't make sense how a Jewish person or whoever's on in the Sabbath can ride in an elevator that is full of electricity but can't push the button to stop on their floor. They just, it's like the little kids that get in the elevator and go. Anybody been in those? It's like. There's no one in here, but we're stopping on every floor. And, you, and I laugh. I'm thinking some kid did this right. It'd be funny if it was an adult. <laughs> like, hey, you know who's getting on? <laughs> we don't like them. <laughs> and, and see, some of that doesn't make any sense to my brain. But can I tell you this? If you want your soul refreshed, because most of us need it in this crazy world, you got to do it God's way. And he'll refresh you. And even though you're tired physically, There'll still be this strength that comes that says, I still got some energy. I can still go do. Why? Because God himself restores our soul. See, we, we get that confused with our physical well-being. But if he refreshes my soul, my physical well-being will be better. It's all about the word and what God talks about. It's his love and mercy given to us to say, can you just do it my way? So the Sabbath was not about doing nothing. It was serving and ministering to the Lord. 
Again, there's nothing wrong with vacations. It does refresh you, can help you relax and physically, some. But we need the refreshing from God to heal this pandemic. So when you get around your friends and they said, man, aren't you depressed anymore? Say, I'm not depressed. Are you still full of anxiety? I'm not full of anxiety. Why? Because I am doing what God says. And as I worship him and serve others and do what he asks and pray and meditate, he's refreshing my soul, man. And that will be a witness to somebody else. God wants you to be whole and healthy spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally. That doesn't mean you won't be sick. It doesn't mean, but man, depression and anxiety, they're debilitating things in people's lives. I mean, it gets so bad that some people won't even go out of their house. It's like, are you kidding me? I have people tell me, and, you know, I, I would go to church, but I can't handle crowds. I'm like, so you're saying that you can't handle being around God's people. So God created you different than us. Well, I don't know what to do. You need to come and sit and make yourself sit. And if you get a little anxious, then walk out and then come back in and say, God, you need to refresh me. I don't want to live like this. I don't know why anybody wants to live like that. And you know what? The world tells you you have to. God says you don't have to. Who are you going to believe? And folks, I'm not trying to be harsh or mean because I take vacations. You got to go on. But man, think about the power of God that can work in our lives if we just act on his promises. Let me read this and I close. Isaiah 40, verse 28 through 31. Have you ever, have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. And sometimes when you're in those debilitating episodes of depression and anxiety, here's your scripture. Even youths will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion. And I love this. But those who trust, the King James says, those who wait in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary and they will walk and not faint. And most people will read this and think it's physical. Like, I can run and never grow weary. I can walk and not faint. He's not talking about that. He's talking about your whole life. As you live life, as you walk in life, as you run in life. He is our strength. And you will soar on wings like eagles. I will run and not grow weary, and I will walk and not faint. It's not talking about a physical motion. It's talking about what God does for us when we wait on him and we recognize his greatness. God, you're, you're incredible. You're awesome. There's a lot of things in my life I, I don't understand. I still don't understand. There's some understanding has come, but there's a lot I don't understand. And I'll tell God I don't get it. I don't understand it. But I've never said, God, I'm angry at you or I hate you. Because I know once that happens, your strength leaves you. And we need to learn to wait and trust on the Lord. And, and you know what? Pastor Stephen Martin was with us last night. And when we got doing, finished doing what I'm fixing to do, he said, you know what? We do, new, we do need more of that back in the body of Christ, just waiting on God. So here's what's going to happen. Here in a moment, I'm going to ask you if you want to get right with God or if you've never been right with God that you're ready to give, make Jesus Lord of your life so he can save you. Salvation is a byproduct of lordship and he'll save you. For all the campuses watching, here in a moment, I'm going to turn it over to the campuses and here's what we're going to do after that. I'm going to crawl off the stage. Someone said, how are you going to get down? Crawl. I'm not going to, not going to jump. <laughs> Last time I jumped off the stage, I hurt my knee. I'm not going to do that again. And my wife and some of the leaders are going to come up here. And if you have issues with anxiety, last night I prayed for a guy that touched my heart. 
He said, man, I suffer with depression and anxiety. I said, both. You big old guy. He said, yeah, pastor, I have PTSD. And I mean, we laid hands on him. What does the Bible say in Mark? Let me just read. Can I read it real quick? I'll read it because we'll be done. Mark 16. Listen, let me just read the word to you because it'll refresh your soul. It's good to read it and understand it. But look at what he says. Mark 16, starting in verse 15. And then he told them, and this is the first commission that Jesus gave. Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. He's not talking to preachers. We always look, well, he's talking to the pastors. He didn't say pastors. He's talking to believers. Are you, how many here are believers? That's what you're supposed to go do. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. That takes away all the good people and all the nice people, doesn't it? These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. This is talking about all of us. They will cast out demons in my name. God forbid we talk about the devil. Oh, my gosh. People are like, oh, no. And, and, and a lot of the mental illnesses are, 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 are demonic activity. Some of them are real. I mean, some, if your arm can be broken, your brain can be broken. I get it. But not all of them. Road rage is not a mental illness. That's just, that's just a lack of self-control. But anyway, they'll cast out demons in my name. And they will speak in new languages. Uh-oh. This is Jesus telling every believer what they'll do. So if you have a problem with being filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues, you have a problem with Jesus himself. Man, God help you. They will be able to handle snakes with safety. Now, back in the hills of Kentucky and Virginia, there are people that believe that they should handle snakes. And if you've sinned, they, they won't, you know, if you've sinned, they'll bite you. If you haven't sinned, they won't bite you. I, I'd be bitten like a thousand times. What the heck? And I hate snakes. I'm like, nope. I think there's one thing we should do with snakes. Like, and I know people have pet snakes. Like, why? We go on vacation sometimes in those big, what, bulk constrictors? What are those big old snakes? Anacondas? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> they, they, thanks, Brianna. They, people say, hey, you want to take a picture? No, I, don't, I want to. I, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm backing up. Like, that's a serpent. Those are... The devil used them to trick Eve. That's why we're all in this mess. <laughs> and then Adam was just like a man like a lot of us. We can't stand up to our woman. Don't do that. God forbid. <laughs> just do what she says. Even if she takes you out. Get, got, you got kicked out of the garden. What the heck? <laughs> and it's not the woman's fault. It's the man's fault because he stood right there and didn't do anything about it. I don't know if he was like... Lord, I, I, he probably just said, Lord, I was afraid of Eve. <laughs> Whatever. So don't play with snakes. These people lived where they walked in the desert, in the wilderness. I mean, they put, the reason they put walls around their cities was so the lions or whatever won't come in and kill them. We live differently. I, I've never seen a lion walking down our street. And if I did... <laughs> It wouldn't be there long because someone would say, oh, man, I'm going to get a trophy. Okay, here we go. <laughs> and if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. And here's what I want you to hear. They will be able to place their hands on the sick, and they will be healed. So in a moment, what we're going to do is the folks I've talked to are going to come up here and pray. And, and there'll be other folks that want to come. If you would just hold off, if we need help, we'll get you. And I don't usually do this at all. I, I thought about it yesterday all day. I got to church. I said, I, I just really believe I'm supposed to do this. It's not something I hardly ever do. So I really believe this is the Lord. This is how we're going to wait on him. Now, when we do this, and wherever you're at in the campuses, if you need to go, not yet, don't get up yet because I'm fixing to do something that's the most important thing of the service. You can go home, and no, no big deal. But some of you may want to stay and worship God and say, God, I just need my soul refreshed. Others of you that deal with depression and anxiety, folks, I'm gonna, say, I, I'm gonna be as nice as I can. I really do believe that's the people we're praying for. 
you have something else going on in you, we can get someone to pray for you. But the ones we're going to pray for are depression, anxiety, the PTSD issues that create that. Because God needs to heal our fractured mind or things we've seen, the traumatic. I, I, I pray with a girl last night, that young lady, she was young. She was crying. I said, well, what happened to you in life? And she, was, she saw her sister get in this horrific car accident. I said, did she live? And she goes, she did, but it was, it was traumatic for her because it was so, she thought she was de dead. And it just does something. And the enemy keeps lying. We gotta break that stuff. We're gonna lay hands on the people tonight. Not in a freaky way, in a kind way. And we're gonna believe God that people are gonna leave here better, healed. As they go, they're healed. Right now, they, they'll be walking away. That heaviness will leave them. They're like, man, I haven't had this kind of peace in I can't remember how long. These guys are going to lead us in worship, and we're just going to wait on God. We're going to learn to run and not grow weary. We're going to learn to walk and not faint because it's a hard world out there. We need that peace in our minds, in our hearts. But if you're here right now and you say, Preacher, would you pray with me? I walked with God and I walked away. I need to come back and get it right, Preacher. Pray with me. Or Preacher, would you pray with me? Now these folks moving, they're not leaving. They're just ushers. They're going to help. They're serving. They're going to be refreshed by the power of God because they're refreshing others. Or you hear and you say, you know, Preacher, maybe you prayed a prayer here and there but you've never made Jesus Lord of your life. You've never been willing to follow him. And that means follow him in the good times, the bad times, the tough times, the hard times. Just keep following him. The most discouraging times, the times where I don't understand God, we keep following him. That's lordship. So if that's you with every head bowed just for a moment, I know they're gonna turn it over to all the other campuses. I've given instruction. They're gonna pray for you there. In Jesus' name, are you ready? If you're here, quickly, no hesitation. This is time to say, yes, I want God in my life. If that's you in the powerful name of Jesus, right where you're seated with every head bowed just for a moment, you say, preacher, include me in your prayer. God, I don't care what anybody else thinks. I want you in my life today. I need my soul refreshed. If that's you, in Jesus' name, right where you're seated, would you just lift your hand up all over this place? God bless you, 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 God bless you. God bless you over here. Thank you over here. God bless you. God bless you, God bless you. God bless you. Look at these hands. See, God's moving. God bless you. He's refreshing your soul. He's going, you're going to be different. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you over here. God bless you up there. I'm looking. God bless you guys. God bless you. God bless you up there, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Who else? God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you, guys. Anybody else? I'm going to look across one more time. Thank you, young man. Thank you. Or young lady. Way up there. God bless you. Thank you so much. Man, our ushers are so good. They help me. Thank you. Thank you right here. God loves people. But man, we don't have to live like the world. We can live. Thank you. God bless you. Anybody else? I don't want to miss anybody else. I'm just acknowledging you, and thank God, thank you. It'll change your life. You're acknowledging God now, Jesus before men, and he'll acknowledge you before our Father in heaven. Father, in Jesus' name, you see all those hands, and it's a miracle. This is the greatest miracle of all. It's when people come to you and you change their life from the inside out. That you, by your spirit, come in and dwell in them, and indwell us, and we become the temple of the Holy Ghost. God, may they sense your presence and your power tonight. May they sense your healing, that you are the Lord that healeth thee. God bless them, each one, in Jesus' name. If you lifted your hand, I want you to pray this prayer loud with me. And if you're right with God, I want you to join in support of these folks and pray with us. Help serve somebody else. Maybe you didn't lift your hand, but you should have. I'm gonna lead you to Jesus. Would you pray this prayer with me aloud? Would you pray, God, I choose to believe in Jesus. And I believe he's your son. And I believe he's Lord of all. So with my heart, I choose to believe this. And now with my mouth, I willingly confess, Jesus, be Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me now. 
and healing me and forgiving me. I appreciate it, God. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen.